Well, I'm setting the bow now for the continuous arm Windsor chair, and it seems to be going all right. I started by first of all securing the front posts here on the arms, really because they're very strong and they actually hold the bow without any of the spindles. So it, it immediately lets me know the sort of dimensions I'm needing to cope with and getting the angles right. I then set the middle spindle and got that secured and I just taped it. I've then gone along with all the other spindles, setting them roughly into shape, taping them so I know how to do it, how to line them up. What I'm going to do next, I'm going to slim off all of these spindles, because at the moment they're about getting towards half an inch in thickness at the top, and I want to take that right down to about five sixteenths of an inch. Because what I'm going to do, I'm going to blind mortise them into the actual bow of the chair itself, and that way they'll just sort of, I'll have to hand drill from underneath, getting the angle, guessing the angle basically, but drilling in and then putting the, the spindle into the hole in each case underneath the bow itself so that they sit in there nice and securely but um, hidden and not, not coming the whole way through. So I'm doing it in the classic Windsor style basically. The, I've also been sorting out the legs and I've got those now bored through into the seat. Again, slightly sort of <laughs> rowing when you're sort of drilling through a nice bit of elm like this, but you make a mistake on the angles, but that, that seems fine at the moment. I've just turned the stretchers on the pole lathe, and those are ready. I've drilled the holes in the legs to take the stretchers. So that's done as well. In all cases, the joints for the legs and the main arm joints, I'm wedging with little wooden wedges which are made out of oak, which I've just cut out. So they'll simply wedge through little slots in both the legs and the arms to secure all of those. The back spindles I've got prepared and I've just done by sight holes in the seat for those. I'm going to have to ditto, do a sight drilling, just lining up the drill bit underneath with a spindle placed in position to get the angle there in each case. So there'll be two of these. I'm doing it as a braced back continuous arm Windsor, just because I quite like the braced back design. It's again, it's personal preference really. And then what I'll do, I'll um, take everything apart, give it all a bit of a scrape to clean it up, and then actually glue it all together. And hey presto, it'll then be, I'll do a bit of polishing before I do all the gluing then it would be the final polishing using a French polish and um, a bit of wax to get a nice finish on the chair. So getting there. I've bored the mortises into the legs ready for the cross stretchers. One of my next tasks is to um, smooth over the side of the seat so it doesn't look quite so thick. I've been trying to get the moisture content down on my wood turnings. I'm not so worried about the center of those stretchers because actually if they're a bit wetter they'll actually shrink around um, the wood going into them but it's the ends I'm really trying to get. So um, I've been storing them in an airing cupboard for quite some time now and I check the moisture now and again with a moisture meter and what I'll do I'll put a first coat of French polish on once I've sanded the spindles uh, I won't put it down the end where the glue's going, but I'll make sure the French polish is actually just, you know, there's one coat to try and help with these spindles, and it will stop my sort of hands if I'm using an oil stone, getting any sort of further dirt on the actual turned wood, so keep it nice and clean. The good thing also about the French polishing, it shows up any blemishes in the wood <laughs> in terms of where it needs perhaps a bit more scraping and to get a nice um, good finish on the wood. It's worth mentioning a couple of tools I find quite useful. One is this little verit Veritas um, saw. It's a sort of one-sided saw, so it's used for cutting off the sort of dowel ends or leg ends. And it doesn't scratch the seat because the teeth are all slightly raised. So it's um, just sort of cut on its edge and you can sort of saw away and um, saw it flush with the seat. It's actually called a flush cut saw and that, that does quite a nice job. Another tool that I find particularly useful is this Veritas honing gauge. 
it just helps get the right angle. It comes with a little angle setting device and um, it's a nicely made tool and it just gets a perfect angle at whatever degrees you want to have. The Veritas honing gauge also comes with this um, setting jig so I can get the exact angle that I want to have. It looks a bit complicated but it's actually very good to use and it's quite simple to use. The other thing I make use of is this little gauge which has all the different angles on it and you can sort of double check your angles so you've got the right angle on your cut edge. Again, simple tool but very useful to have. So that's the Veritas honing gauge. I don't, I don't have shares I should add in Veritas, <laughs> um, but I do generally find our products to be of a nice quality. Well I've now cleaned up the seat and I've given it one coat of French polish and I've actually got the legs in. Well the chair's coming on pretty well, I've just been cleaning up all the, the sort of components so I've got the seat now, all the legs attached, um, seat cleaned up, wedges, legs cut off, all, all joined in. So seats are solid as anything. Um, just now focusing on the bow and fitting all the spindles. I've just fitted the main centre spindle here, which really acts as my reference point then for doing the other spindles. And I'm using a compass just to go along the top of the bow to make sure that I get the spacing equal both sides. Doesn't really matter if the splay is slightly different as long as it's equal. Um, symmetrical each side so that's what I'm doing so I'm trimming basically marking these tops of the spindles and then trimming them with a little gent saw and then just like one of these and then I, I'm drilling up doing a little marker pilot drill hole with a point and then going in with the proper drill at about five sixteenths of an inch and just then putting them in so going about halfway into the bow so I'm maintaining the strength of the bow, but giving enough of a sort of mortise and tenon, so if the spindle does loosen and flex, it won't come out of its actual holding. So that's, that's the spindle stage, get these in, and the chair suddenly, it picks up strength. You can feel it already with that centre one. Everything's getting more anchored down, which is great. It needs to be, because obviously these are now very thin, but the grain, because they're all riven, spindles the grain is going from top to bottom so they're very strong with it far stronger than say a pencil um, they really would take quite a bit to break one of these so I'll carry on cutting these putting these in we're getting there well this is actually where we get quite a sort of tricky bit of drilling to do because what I want to do is drill underneath the arm to put that spindle in and what I've actually done is I've bored in this case the whole way through the seat so I can put the spindle down and then drill up. Now to drill up with any sort of drill is going to be tricky but what I'm using is a drill bit extension with a little drill and then I'll just widen out the drill but I'll, I'll start it off. So this is one way of getting your sight line sort of right, but it's a tricky drilling because the arm bends quite severely there, so I really don't want to be getting it to go more than I need to. So I've roughly lined up under here where I want the drill to go, and it is a matter of trying to do it by eye as much as possible. Like so. That's that's, that's roughly it there. <laughs> the other thing I have to watch, it's obviously quite thin the arm here. So it's, um, I don't know, about three quarters of an inch if that. It's probably about like seven eighths. So I really don't want this drill, which is going at quite an angle, to go through the arm because that would be a bit unsightly. So very much proceed with caution. It does do it. And then what I can do, I can just increase the diameter of that drill bit. And then go in with one of the bigger drills. 
well I've just been cleaning all the components and now I'm ready for glue up time so always a little bit fraught but I've got everything ready so I've got my little wedges whoops, prepared for the arms to tap those in and um, I've done obviously a trial run got everything marked up and hopefully it will go all right <laughs> But it's so often the case with gluing up, um, have to move really fast. I shouldn't have had the heating, my fire burning in here actually, because um, the glue's going off very quickly indeed. <laughs> pencil marks and then I'll finish the French polishing and hey presto, one share.